Hi, everyone. My name is Prakash Chandran. I am one of the founders and the CEO of Xano. And with me today, I'm very excited to have Toby Oliver. Toby is the CEO of Bravo Studio. One of the things that I had wanted to do today was give uh, our community a good sense of Bravo Studio, why it was created, and uh, really what its main value proposition is, why they should consider using it to build their uh, mobile application. So Toby, I want to give you the floor and you can take this wherever you'd like to go. So really Bravo Studio was designed to sort of solve three problems that um, me and the founding team kind of came up with. One is um, the importance of design. Uh, often it's, well, it's very hard in the sort of, to, when you're doing rapid application development to have that flexibility of design. A lot of uh, tools, uh, tend to focus on functionality rather than design. And, and actually, to have an application that really connects with the user, design is a very important part to really helping that UX. So that was the first step. The second thing is the sort of power that comes with APIs. Um, you know, APIs, I mean, if, coming from tools like Xano, you know, it can create huge amounts of flexibility and functionality and allowing you to completely decouple what you want to get done from other parts of your application. Um, and we saw, saw that as being a critical part of, you know, where things are going. And we wanted to make sure that we really sort of took that into account. Um, the third thing really, and this is why we focused on mobile, is the pain of mobile development. Uh, mobile development is, I feel, is one of, the, one of the hardest things to develop for. You've got to aim at both Android and iOS to really cover the space. Um, both of them are very uh, different. It's rare to find developers who do both well. Um, there are tools that make it easier, but they come with their own compromises. You know, React Native or doing a mobile um, web app, you can do those things. They cover off some of the answers, but you really want to have a fully native application. And, and that's what Bravo does, is it gives you a fully native application. Um, it's written in Kotlin for um, uh, Android and, and Swift for iOS. So you have access to the full native parts of the app of the device. And yeah, you, so it gives you that full flexibility. And so what we did with Bravo is we kind of bring all these ideas together uh, and we created the platform that helps you sort of build and manage your applications through their lifecycle, really being driven from the Figma design. So you can go from a Figma design to a fully working application by connecting it to a backend tool like Xano um, through APIs. Um, and that, the connecting of the APIs to the design is a really powerful mix that helps people move really, really fast. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say we're necessarily the, the absolute fastest tool, but we're the tool that gets you the fastest for the highest quality. That mix is something that we we, we deliver on, I think, better than almost anybody uh, and allowing you to kind of iterate really, really fast because we work so closely with the design tools. So it's really, you know, Bravo was really about those sort of solving, the, well, working on those three issues I talked about and helping people move uh, or develop in the mobile space um, and iterate as fast as possible. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing kind of those three tenants, which helps you develop Bravo. Um, it's very clear, even from our shared user base, that a lot of people are finding success using Bravo Studio on the front end and a tool like Xano on the back end. Uh, I want to dive a little bit deeper into uh, certainly the first and the third uh, thing that you brought up. So number one, the importance of design. I think one thing that I've seen that separates Bravo is that ability to easily go from a Figma document uh, all the way or directly to uh, app development. That is something that's huge. And that allows people to prototype very quickly. How fast are you seeing users basically go from design to something that they can actually publish to the app store? Like a lot of things in development, it's it's a bit of a, the answer is kind of, it depends. Um, I mean, it really, you know, a lot of it's about what they're trying to do and the sort of features that they're trying to build in. Um, I mean, I think we have seen in the best, uh, in the best case, you know, they can, they can, and particularly if they know Figma well, because obviously that's, you know, that we, it's a critical part of the design process for Bravo, but, you know, you can go through something that could be published in a matter of hours. Um, yeah. Often, you know, you can actually take your existing design, you know, put some annotations on just so Bravo can figure out how it fits together. And then you can have something that can actually provide value to users, you know, it's super fast. You know, you don't have to rebuild it in another tool. You work with Figma. And actually, one of the things I should say is that that's one of the powers of working with Figma is that if you ever needed to leave Bravo, you know, we don't want to lock people in. You can just simply take your Figma design and take it somewhere else because your design is in Figma. It gives you that portability uh, benefit which is incredibly powerful so yeah i mean 
because that connection to Figma, it just means people can move uh, and 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 get stuff done incredibly fast. And typically, you know, people that are using Figma are, you know, they're designers. There's some project managers in there. Like, typically, can you talk to us a little bit about who Bravo is best suited for? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting one. And we first, when we first started, we really aimed at designers. Um, we thought that, uh, well, and we still do ultimately in the long term, is I think they're going to be the people that benefit from this the most. Often designers, you know, they put a lot of the thought into the application, but they then have to hand over to developers. And that handover process is so painful. It's so rare to get a designer to actually get back from developers what they really wanted to, to build in the first place. But, but the trouble is, because I think trying to give to designers was a little bit too early i think we're trying to do too much in one go so what we're really seeing now is the people that really unlock the value of bravo are the sort of uh product managers uh product owners and and potentially sort of um entrepreneurs who want to build you know want to build fast and want to iterate and get feedback from users um but have something that's robust enough to be used as a product you know yeah. i mean there's this concept that's kind of valid which is the idea of product typing you know with bravo your prototype can be your product you know, because right. you know particularly if you're using a tool like xano on the back end which is a scalable back end that can scale nicely for you you know you're not really compromising in taking your design into bravo your bravo scales to tens of thousands of users depending on as long as the back ends can support it so if you have your prototype in a state that you're happy with then you could launch it and you can use it for you know, several versions of your actual product. You don't need to have to rebuild it to actually get, get it out there. And um, I think that's a really powerful concept that is going to help people move faster. Absolutely. And what would you say like are some of the most common things that are successfully built with Bravo? Like what are you seeing most often? So, I mean, originally it was fairly simple kind of brochureware kind of apps, I think. As we added in more uh, sort of interactive functionality, we're seeing more and more sort of applications used to connect to the sort of core of people's businesses, you know, to apps to actually deliver functionality. I think we're seeing, at the moment, we're seeing a bunch of activity um, from content creators. So, you know, a lot of people who are building, make, generating content have been putting on YouTube to monetize it, but they really want to, you know, take more of the, get more of the sort of value that they're creating and building their own apps. Now, up till now, it's been really expensive to that. It would cost you that sort of tens of thousands of dollars to build an app to actually have your content on, particularly to have it behind a in-app purchase paywall, which is normally quite complex to set up. With Bravo, you can do that for the fraction of the cost and a fraction of the time developing it. Basically, giving sort of democratizing some of this ability to help people get uh, unlock the value of their content has been a particularly driver for us recently. Got it. So like if I were an influencer on YouTube and let's say like I had a cooking channel and then I wanted to create an app where I could interact with my users and they could potentially buy items from me, that's something that I might be able to uh, build in Bravo and also basically for the in-app purchase, have them be able to buy that subscription directly. And that's all yep. kind of components that you can do in Bravo, right? A absolutely. In fact, we're building some example apps for this right now um, to show people that how easy it is to get their content. You know, particularly, you know, these sort of people who've got premium content, you know, they might issue a few pieces of content for free to, as a taster and then have their subscribers get access to more content. Having that in an app purchase paywall is a perfect way of getting that with really low friction in terms of getting that uh, the actual um, revenue coming in. So, uh, it's, that's a great example. And that's something we're definitely trying to push more right now. One of the last things I wanted to ask you was, you know, I, I don't think there's a lot of understanding for people around native mobile application development versus like web responsive mobile application development. Can you talk at a high level about the difference between the two and why you chose to only do native mobile application development? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think there's, there's a lot of benefits. It really depends on sort of what you're trying to get to i mean a web uh, mobile application generally they don't really go into the app store uh, particularly apple and i think google to a degree as well they don't like apps which are just web apps purely web apps they like to have actually native functionality so it's difficult to get in the app store so immediately you're getting your you know if you don't get into the app store you're losing that whole acquisition channel you know the ability to have something discoverability uh, particularly in sort of mobile first countries you know, app stores are often the way people search for companies. 
Um, and so, you know, not having a decent presence there, you lose out on a bunch of your potential audience. Having it fully native unlocks a bunch of extra functionality, both in the phone itself. Apple has actually cut down some of the native functionality of the phone via the web apps. Um, I think they removed Bluetooth recently, but probably the most important thing for a lot of people is the native notifications of their mobile. Um, email is becoming such a noisy channel. It's difficult to reach people through that, but apps with notifications is a fantastic way of still getting through to people. One of the key features we built with Bravo recent, a while back was the ability to do deep linking in the apps. So notifications can go directly to pages within the applications so depending mm -hmm. on the criteria you sent. So it really helps you make your app much more engaged and be able to get to the users that you want to do, uh, which is an incredibly important thing in this sort of crazy, busy environment we have these days. You know, people that are going to be watching this are going to try, they're going to be trying to make a decision around what tool to use. And there are obviously other, um, you know, native mobile app builders out there. I wondered if you could share, uh, you know, your thoughts around helping them make the right decision and when they should really consider a tool like Bravo Studio. You know, if you don't know what you're quite you're building, then Bravo is for, it's incredibly helpful because it allows you to iterate quickly. You know, often when you're when you start building something, and nearly always when you're building an application, you never know quite what you're going to build because you take feedback from users and you and you kind of learn and you change. Bravo is a great win because it's so easy to iterate. I mean, you can once you've built the app in Figma, it's so simple to change things, add screens in, uh, and push them through to the application in minutes. Um, I, I don't know any other tool that has moves as fast as Bravo in that respect. Going from the as you changing the design and particularly leveraging Figma, you can, you know, you can collaborate with other people, or, you know, when you're talking about your changes and then push it through to Bravo, you know, almost live. What really stands it apart is, is that is sort of iteration piece. Another thing that you all have done very well is made it easy for uh, Xano users to connect uh, their backends to Bravo Studio. I know that you also uh, can connect to many different data sources, but if you're watching this and you are a Xano user, Bravo Studio has made that very easy. Xano really fits very well with Bravo because it kind of, you know, it focuses, as I mentioned earlier, it focuses on the back end and we focus on the front end. And, I, you know, we put, we built the, the wizard to enable that connection to become more, uh, become a bit easier. Um, but, you know, I think I just want to say what great work you guys have done. It's a great combination. Zeno and Bravo. We, we have a lot of our users um, who come to us saying, you know, we want to build a Bravo app. What do we do a back end? And, you know, nine times out of 10, now we're recommending Zeno because it has the, is a great sort of combination of being the sort of flexibility, simplicity, but also the scalability. I mean, that, that combination is, is great and it fits really well with what we're trying to do in Bravo. So I would say, I just say, think it's a great combination for a lot of users that we see. For sure. Well, I mean, we feel the same way about Bravo Studio. So, Toby, thank you so much for your time. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Prakash.